All right, so today we're going to go through some videos looking at solving some pipe flow problems. And so the first topic we're going to go through here is just a quick summary of what the kinds of problems are that you can see. So, so we've built up over the last couple of classes the theory for laminar flow. We did a couple of problems where you solved laminar flow problems to, to compute things that might be of interest in engineering applications like the head loss, the pipe diameter, the or flow rate, anything like that. And then we went through the theory last time for turbulent flow. Okay, and so uh, turbulent flow, again, we, we talked about how you have the laminar sublayer, the viscous sublayer, that is where the energy dissipation happens on the on the perimeter. And that can either be more or less uh, thick than the roughness height of the pipe and so that's where the energy losses happen and depending on whether it's bigger or smaller that tells us uh, <clears throat> what the um, key source of uh, energy or the, the equations that we need to use for for energy dissipation for uh, turbulent flow okay so um, anyway let's look now at doing some problems and so again the different kinds of things we might solve for um, these are I've broken them into really five possibilities. The first one is the fluid properties, like the density or the viscosity. Okay, so we understand that the Reynolds number is going to be an important consideration when doing uh, any of these problems. And the friction factor that we derived last time, it depends on the Reynolds number, and it also depends then on the roughness height. And so um, it is possible to have problems where we have information and then we solve for density or viscosity. These are not very common because generally we've measured these properties already, although it could it could happen. Okay, the second option is to solve for uh, the pipe material. Okay, so the roughness height is a variable that is important and so it's possible that that would be an unknown that you could solve for. So both of these things are, are typically values that have already been computed for different materials. It, you could solve them. Um, and maybe I'll talk just briefly about how you could do that. Um, but most of the problems that we're doing, we already know what kind of pipe we're going to use, and we already know what the fluid is. And so that means that these properties tend to already be known in the first two. All right. So then that leaves us with these last three problems. These are the ones that we often have to solve in engineering applications. And we said the head loss, that is the amount of energy loss in a pipe, is important. And we may also be interested in the pressure drop. Um, and so the uh, the pressure drop is going to depend on the amount of energy loss between two points, okay, which is related with the head loss. And so this is the first type. And then the next type is we might want to solve for flow rate. We might also want to solve for velocity, but typically it's flow rate. We want to know for a particular pipe and particular fluid how much flow rate we can get out of that pipe. Is it going to be enough for what we need? And then the last option is uh, the diameter and that might be okay we need a, a pipe and is this pipe going to be big enough? So we need to make sure that the pipe size is sufficient to get the flow we want. Okay so we might be interested in like how much pressure drop there is because pressure is an important consideration in engineering designs how much flow we can get or the diameter. All right and so again yeah it, in thinking about the kinds of problems we see, it is rare that we would that we solve problems for the first two things because these have often been done. Now, if you're working with some new material or a new fluid and you don't know the fluid properties, then you might have to solve for those. But most of the problems that we're doing really are on those last three types, and they're listed in this order in particular because the first two we don't do very much. The third one is the easiest. And the fourth one is the hard, is next hardest, and the fifth one is the, the hardest to solve. And the reason for that is because the friction factor depends on two dimensionless numbers, which we've talked about already. That is the Reynolds number and the uh, relative roughness, which is the roughness height divided by the pipe diameter. So there's two, um, there are two dimensionless numbers that we have to compute. Uh, if we're solving the pressure drop or head loss calculation, we actually can figure out what those two numbers are. And so that makes it easy to get the friction factor relatively easy, let's say. Uh, if you're solving for flow rate, that means that you don't know what the velocity is, and that means you don't know what the Reynolds number is. And so that is uh, that makes the problem a little bit harder because we need to get the friction factor, and it depends on the Reynolds number. So we have to make an assumption, and you often have to do an iteration. 
And the other uh, factor then we said is the relative roughness, which is the roughness height divided by the pipe diameter. And uh, if you're solving for the diameter, um, that means you won't know the Reynolds number and you won't know the roughness height. So you've got like two, both of those are unknowns. So it, it's, it's an even more complicated iteration problem. Okay, well, we'll look at how to solve those. But so um, first two kinds are not common. Third one is easy, relatively easy. <laughs> Fourth one is a little bit harder and fifth one is hardest. So we'll do those in that order. All right, so yeah. Uh, to, and so what's often the case in problems is we'll have some of this information will be interested in solving something else. Like we know we're doing water and we know how much flow we need, so what's the diameter? Or we have a, di a pipe and we have water flowing through it and we're curious how much flow we're going to get. Or we have uh, the design flow and diameter and we're wanting to know what the pressure will be at the end of that pipe. Those are the kinds of things we're, we're trying to find. So typically we know two of the three and we're solving for the last one. And again, most of the time we're going to know the first two things. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the kinds of problems that you may have to solve, and then they can manifest in different forms. In this situation, um, we're going to write the Darcy Weisbach equation here. We're going to need to use this in solving it. If we're worried about flow rate, we're going to need the velocity to get the Reynolds number. And we can combine these two equations here for the equation for flow rate to get the velocity, average velocity, that is. And uh, we can combine that here and so we may use these formulas then when we're solving them. Um, we're also always going to need the Darcy Weisbach equation here that we use to compute the head loss given the friction factor and this is the way it is typically written FL over dV squared over 2g which we talked about before as it gets longer or it gets it gets uh, more head loss as the velocity is bigger more head loss as the diameter is bigger less head loss okay we can rewrite this then in terms of flow rate instead of velocity uh, and we may use this form okay so these two equations are exactly the same I know some students get lost thinking there's so many equations they're really not this is the same equation it's just making life a little easier and substituting uh, the value the values here from this equation uh, in for velocity so that we can uh, not not have to compute the velocity directly if we're trying to find it. Okay, so we have if we have flow rate, we don't have to solve for v first. We can just use this. Okay, so this is the first kind of problem here where we are solving for the head loss or the pressure drop in a in a pipe if we know the flow rate and diameter and fluid properties. In this situation, this is the form of the Darcy Weisbach equation we're going to need because this is what we're trying to solve for the head loss. Uh, we may need to, to get pressure drop. We may need to include an energy balance equation for this uh, also. So in this situation, we're going to know the flow rate. And we're going to know the diameter, and that means that we can get the velocity. We can get the Reynolds number. We can get the relative roughness. So these are our two dimensionless numbers that we need, and then we can use these to get F with the Moody chart or with the uh, Swami Jane equation that we looked at briefly last time so we plug so we get these two things plug them in and get F and then we have this and we plug it in here to get the head loss okay so let's do a quick example here find the head loss due to a flow of 1500 gallons per minute of water at 20 Celsius through 1600 feet of 8 inch diameter cast iron pipe okay so here we're trying to get the head loss due to friction okay and uh, we're looking at water at 20 Celsius and we've got the flow rate all right so we know we're looking here at also at cast iron pipe okay so that means and we're looking at water at 20 Celsius so again two of the variables that are always important here are fluid properties and pipe material so we look up density and viscosity and then we're going to look up pipe material to get our value for uh, relative roughness and so for cast so the relative roughness here for cast iron we will need and you can go and look that up in the supplemental data file and we're working here in uh, feet and gallons so that means we're going to need it in units of feet and if you do that you should find that the value for roughness height is 0.00 oh sorry there's one more o, 0 0.00085 uh, feet okay and then we have the value for q we're told is 1500 gallons per minute Okay, so GPM is a common acronym for gallons per minute, so we write gal per min, minute like that. And then we have the length of the pipe here is 1,600 feet, and the diameter here we're told is 8 inches. And then again, we're going to need our uh, fluid properties here for water, density, and viscosity. So we're actually just going to use the kinematic viscosity 
in this situation here. And so that is in feet, 1.08 times 10 to the minus fifth feet squared per second. Okay, so this is all the information given in the problem statement. And again, we're going to follow our cookbook approach. Yeah, again, this is to make it easier. Um, you got to be able to figure out when you're looking at this problem which of these approaches you want to use. But really, there aren't too much to know. There's just we have to get the friction factor from relative roughness. We need to get our pipe materials and fluid properties. And then we need to get our head loss from that. That's going to be in all these problems. All right, so we're going to need the velocity here. You can also skip getting it if you use, you say, like this form of the equation to get Reynolds number. But I'm going to go ahead and compute it here. Or actually, I'm not going to do it. So uh, we can also get V from, yeah, I don't know. We are going to get it. OK, so area is pi d squared over 4. So 4 over pi times q, which is 1,500 gallons per minute. Okay, and times uh, d squared here in the denominator. So that is going to be, I need to convert that to feet. So I'll just do that as 8 over 12, and that's squared. And that is in uh, feet squared. And notice here we're in gallons per minute. So we're going to need to do a unit conversion to go from gallons into cubic feet. Good unit conversion to know uh, that's very commonly used, and that is 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot. Okay, so 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot, and that gets us to feet cubed divided by feet squared, so feet per minute, and we're going to go to per second because that's what we're going to use more typically uh, in our other equations. So a minute has 60 seconds, and so you multiply all that out, and I get that the velocity is 9.56 feet per second. Okay, now we can get the Reynolds number which is dv over nu, and we have d is 8 inches, which needs to be in feet. So I'm going to divide by 12 to get that into feet. v is 9.56 feet per second, and then nu is 1.08 times 10 to the minus fifth feet squared per second. So this should be dimensionless now when we commute it, compute it out, and it's 6 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, and so this is well above our 4,000 threshold. Therefore, we are uh, turbulent flow. Okay, and so we can use either the Swami Jane equation or the Moody chart then to uh, figure out what the friction factor is. So we'll need the so if we either way we do it, we're going to need the relative roughness. So that is uh, e over d and or epsilon over d. And so 0 0.00085 feet divided by d, which is 8 divided by 12 feet. And that gives me 0 0.00128 dimensionless units. So this is our relative roughness, which is our one dimensionless number. And then our Reynolds number, our other dimensionless number. And the combination of those two allows us then to compute the friction factor that we're going to use to compute the head loss. And so then to do that, we are going to go, uh, we can use the Moody chart. So we looked at the, the kind of theoretical basis of the Moody chart here um, last class. So there is a copy of it in your supplemental data file right here. And so again, we talked about how there's the laminar flow. So this is Reynolds number on the x-axis. Okay, so Reynolds number getting bigger. And so small Reynolds number means your laminar, where it's 64 over the Reynolds number. And we have this transition zone. And then um, here we've got the smooth pipes, one equation. And then we've got the complete turbulence here, where uh, the boundary layer is small, and, it's, and they're flat. And then you've kind of got this transition region here in between. And so. Um, to use the Moody chart, then the way that we are going to do it is we're going to we need to find our relative roughness here, and that's going to tell us which of these lines that we use, the dark lines, and then we need to go over to the right spot on the Reynolds number, and then up and and read the friction factor over here on the on the left hand side. So that's how you do that. Okay, and so I would encourage you right now to pause it and see if you can figure out what this is on your own, but I will show you now. So. 
we got relative roughness of 0 0.00128. So uh, over here, that means we need to find 0 0.00128. And so you can find 0 0.001 and 0 0.015. And so 0 0.0128 is like maybe a little bit closer to this than that line. These two dark lines, okay, so like right in there. And if we were to draw it, it would kind of go through. And so uh, 0.0128, then it's kind of between these two over here. And then we need to find on the bot on the x-axis then the Reynolds number. And our Reynolds number was 6 times 10 to the 5th. So here's 10 to the 5th. Here's 10 to the 6th. And then this would be 6 times uh, 10 to the 5th. So that's going to be right up here and in between those two lines over on the right means about right there is going to be our where we end up on the Moody chart and then we read over here to the left and it should be boy that doesn't seem right 0 0.01 it's uh, it's 0 0.001 so uh, sorry it's between this these two lines uh, 0.0013 so maybe a little bit closer to this line than that one and then we go to 6 times 10 to the fifth and we're like kind of right right about maybe there in between these two lines. So if I then read over here to the left, I've got about 0.012 is what I got, I think, yes. So this is 0 .021 is what I got. So we go, we'll just repeat here. The Reynolds number was six times 10 to the sixth. And E over D, our relative roughness was 0.0128. And then if we go to the Moody chart, we get that uh, F is equal to 0.021. Okay, from reading that off there. And so this kind of problem is easier because we can know this is definitely the right F. When we do the other kinds of problems, we don't know the Reynolds number or the E over D because Reynolds number depends on Q. So if you don't know Q, you can't get it at the beginning. You can still get this if you're solving for Q and if you're solving for D then you don't know this and you don't know Reynolds number so it's that's what makes it the hardest this one is the easiest to solve because you can compute these up front so we definitely know that this is the right friction factor and so uh, yeah we could also do this with the Swami Jane equation could um, also do with the SJ equation. Okay, SJ equation, remember, is just a formula instead of the chart. So you can use either one, and I don't care which way you do it. Either way is totally fine. And I did it, I'm not showing the work here, but if you go and plug it in, these two things, into that equation, uh, a couple of pages back in the notes, I also got that it was about 0.021, you know, 0.0207 maybe, or something like that but rounding to this. So we only need it to two significant figures as a general rule. So we've got our friction factor now, and so then we can compute our head loss now. So compute the head loss, and it's equal to F uh, L over D, V squared over 2G with our Darcy Weisbach equation. And so we know everything now. And we've got F is 0.021, L was 1,600 feet. D was 8 inches, so that's 8 divided by 12, 8 twelfths of a foot. And then we have V was 9.56 feet per second, quantity squared. And then G here, remember, if we're working in U.S. units is 32.2 feet per second squared. I do remember seeing people make a mistake on the exam where they used 9.81. <laughs> that's not right for feet so make sure you get that the right value for G for your problem okay and plugging all that in then you should get that the head loss is equal to 71.5 uh, feet so uh, across 1600 feet of pipe the loss of energy associated with the friction at the in the laminar boundary layer of this pipe is going to be 71.5 feet Okay, so we will look at the next kind of problem in the second video.